I recently made this guitar for the great guitar build-off, but the case that was sent to me wasn't quite big enough, so I've decided to make a custom one. I'll get straight into it and I'll start by making the sides of the case from lightweight plywood. The sides will be made up from two pieces and they'll have curved corners and I'll do that by curve bending them and I did a couple of test pieces to get the curve spacing just right. I'll make one slot in each piece first and then I'll use a key to space the rest of the cuts. I'm cutting almost all the way through but not quite, I'm leaving a couple of the plies which leaves just enough strength but allows it to bend. That's one corner cut in each piece and from those I can mark out the two remaining corners. One end of the board to the other has a mismatch and I didn't even attempt to centre the corner cuts as I can flip the board around and both ends are now equal. To join the ends I'll use these plywood splines and I'll cut the slots for those using a slot cutting bit on the router table. By the way, you can still enter the giveaway for the guitar, and if you win, you'll also get this case that I'm making too. And best of all, it goes towards a good cause, which is Movember and my chosen charity. The dry fit looks good, so I'll glue it together, and I'll squeeze construction adhesive into the curves, and that will fill up the voids and add some strength back to the corners. To glue the joints, I use regular wood glue. Off camera I stacked up these pieces of plywood and I cut a radius on using the bandsaw and then I sanded them all together. I'll use them to clamp the corners to try and get some sort of consistency between them. I couldn't think of a good way to check it for square, but in the end I clamped some uprights and I checked it against those. I left it overnight and then the next morning removed all the clamps. Next I'll cut a veneer to go around the outside and I'll make that from black wattle. I don't have a tall feather board so I've pieced this one together and I keep meaning to make one but I always end up doing something like this. There's only one clamp holding it down so I'll clamp a support behind it to stop it from moving forward.
They're a bit too thick, so I'll sand them down. And as I don't have a thickness sander, I'll just have to make do with the orbital. I think I may look into a thickness sander soon, though, as I regularly seem to need one. I'll just glue and clamp them on and do my best to keep the veneer flat against the plywood all the way around. I'll glue one piece on first which will go across the front, around the sides and just onto the back and when that's set I'll glue the next piece on then. That seemed to go pretty well, which I wasn't super confident about, and next I planed off the excess. Now that the sides are done, I need to add some trim onto the top and bottom, and I'll use this black wattle that I milled off camera. I've got some wider pieces for the corners and I'll cut those next and all of the trim is oversized and that will get trimmed back later on after it's been fitted to the sides of the case. I threw this little sled together before starting the project and I really like it, I think it's going to get plenty of use. I also very quickly threw this tenon jig together which I'll use to cut slots in all of the trim and there for splines to join the pieces together. There's a lot of work in this case because of the rounded corners and it would have been far easier to make a square one but hopefully it'll be worth it. I'll mark out and cut the corners next and I will leave some extra on but it will be less work when I come to finish them later on.
I'm just checking that the trim is wide enough all the way around to cover the edges of the case. I left those for about half an hour while I went for lunch, which is long enough for them to set up and then to let me keep working on them. For the outside of the trim, I can flush that up with a flush trim bit on the router table, but I can't do that on the inside because the inside of the trim isn't flush with the inside of the case, so I need to sand the inside of the corners now. I can just about fit it over the belt grinder, which worked out perfectly, but I really should look into getting a bobbin sander, which is another tool that I don't have. The inside edge looks good, so next I'll route a rebate on the router table for the top and bottom panels to fit into. I'll route it so high and then I'll raise the bit and take a second pass. For the top and bottom panels, I'll use 3mm plywood. After sanding them I applied several coats of stain and I decided not to try and match the black wattle on the rest of the case but to make them more of a contrast. Now I'll glue the trim to the case. That's starting to look a bit more case-like. After trimming off the splines, I'll flush trim all of the outside edges on the router table. I've been looking forward to this next step which is a big round over around all of the edges. It's what the whole design is all about and I reckon it's far more interesting than just the square box. I reckon they look awesome. I decided to give it a quick sand, although it will still need a lot more sanding yet. The router did a very clean job, but it did take off a chunk on this corner, so I'll fix that up next. It's time to split the top from the bottom and I'll do that on the table saw. There were a couple of splintery bits but nothing that CA glue couldn't fix. Next I took the leftover veneer from earlier on and I cut that into thin strips. These will be glued around the inside edges of the top and bottom pieces of the case. Before I glue them on I need to clean off the construction adhesive first. I 
I said at the start of the video that I'm using lightweight plywood and I just wanted to stress just how light it is. It's actually pretty good quality too. It's very flat and stable. The only thing that lets it down a little bit is it's really quite soft. Next I'll cover the exposed plywood edge using these thin strips that I prepared off camera. I'll glue them on but as they'll be difficult to clamp I'll fix them on with pin nails. Now I can put the plywood panels in and to hold them down I cut some strips on the table saw with the blade angled over to 45 degrees. I'll fix those with glue and pin nails again and the nails are very short, just 12 millimeters or half inch so they won't come through the sides. The nails are there just to hold the pieces until the glue sets. I don't show it here but I spent a good two or three hours sanding the whole thing ready for finish. And for the finish I'm using wipe on poly which I haven't actually tried before. I gave it two coats and when it had dried I moved on to fitting the hinge. After marking it out and punching down all the pin nails I'll remove a section for the hinge to sit in on the router table. I'm going close to the tape which is my mark leaving some material which I'll remove next with a chisel. I mark the top piece straight off the bottom and I'll cut that one off camera. I decided it wouldn't hurt to put some construction adhesive into the gaps left on the panels. I reinforced the corners a little with another piece of 3mm plywood and that's ready for fitting feet to the underneath. The feet will go right in the corners so they won't stress the panel too much like they could if they were nearer the middle. I made the feet from plastic on the lathe, I really enjoyed making them and they took no time at all.
I also made some smaller feet for the back of the case for when it's standing upright. Next I'll start on the insides. I have this instrument case foam which I didn't even realise was a thing. But first I'll put down a layer of this floor mat foam which is a bit denser and it will add a bit more support from the outside but hopefully it'll never need it but you never know. This spray adhesive is very good stuff especially if you spray it onto both faces. Now that's fitted, I can cut away a section for the guitar. It cuts very nicely and it doesn't need to be perfect anyway as it will be covered later on. That fits well, so next I'll take a slice off the guitar shape piece and place that underneath the guitar. I'll be covering the foam with this furry material but I'll put it aside along with the foam for now and I'll start fitting the hardware. I knew that these clasps weren't going to be the best but they were the best that I could find locally. Anyway they're pretty awful so if you do win the guitar in the case I'm just letting you know that I will be replacing them. They look okay and I could live with that, but they just don't work. I've played around with them, but they're just badly made and they're horrible. Next I'll fit this leather handle that I made. I did film it and I may make a separate video if that's something you'd like to see. I need to find where to fit it by balancing the case with the guitar in it. Next I'll add some webbing at either end and that's to stop the lid from falling backwards. And the last thing before getting back to the foam is covering some of the nuts with hot glue on the outside chance that they may make contact with the guitar. It won't be needed as the guitar is very well supported but it doesn't hurt. I'm hot gluing the foam pieces together which will make them easier to cover. You may have noticed that I've eased over all the top edges which will make it easier to put the guitar in. The material is very forgiving and it's very easy to put in. We're almost done but there's one last finishing touch, I'm going to add a vinyl graphic to the lid of the case. If you do win the guitar in the case and you don't like it then it will be easy enough to remove. 
I'm using packing tape to transfer the design and I do have a proper roll of transfer paper but it is pretty useless as it's so sticky it would just rip the grain off the lid when removed. I thought I was done with working on the tentacles but it took me a couple of hours to draw out these ones again ready to make the vinyl. And that's it, it's all done. Don't forget to get yourself a ticket and be in with a chance to win both the guitar and the case. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you may also enjoy this video where I made a wooden rollout toolbox. Thanks for watching, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you on the next one.